Hello, my name is Kiki and in this video I am going to show you how I designed and built this, this macro keyboard which is at the moment for programmed to work with Fusion 360 but it could be used with any other CAD software, it could be used as a stream deck or could be used also for gaming. It costs roughly 20-25 euro to build one and it's basically a cheap alternative of the Elgato stream deck. If you want to build one yourself, keep watching the video and I will share all the information you will need to do to do so. Let me show you a short demo and let's get to the video. So as you could see in the intro, what I find in this really cool and what I wanted to do with this one is to really speed up the designing process in Fusion 360. Uh, it's not only that I put all the shortcuts, all the main shortcuts onto these keyboards, but what I also wanted to do, and I think is really useful, that for example if in Fusion if you want to draw a rectangle, then you only have on the R button the two, two point rectangle. But I wanted to put all the three versions of rectangles because you can create three point rectangles and you can create rectangles with the center point. So I did it such a way that if you press it once then it's the standard two point rectangle. If you press the R twice then, then it's the three point rectangle and if you press it three times then it's the center point rectangle because for example I use center point rectangle quite a lot. And I did the same for the circle. You have, if you press it once, it's the standard middle point, one point circle. If you press it twice, it's the two point circle. If you press it three times, then it's a two tangent circle. So I find this really cool. You can speed up your process with this one pretty well. And as I told, you could use this also as a stream deck. You could replace the letters on the keyboards. I will share all the files in my GitHub repository, you can download it, you can change everything, whatever you want, or you can use it as I told also for games, for example, I, I do not really play games, but when I play I really like Snow Render, and this is a simulator game, and if I play on my with my steering wheel, then for sure I do not want to put the keyboard next to me, but I need to press quite a lot of buttons to, to, to use the winch, to change between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive mode to lock the differential and so on and so on and I can just put this next to me and I can just use this small thing with a few buttons on it and I can program each and every buttons however I want to program it in, in any of the softwares basically. But enough from talking, let's jump to the build process. So these are all the parts you're gonna need. Some colored wires a USB cable, USB mini version which fits into the Arduino Pro Micro. It's important that you need an Arduino which has native USB port like this one. And then the, all the 3D printed parts. This is the base, as you can see it's angled. The frame for the switches. Then I have two sets of printed buttons. One of them is with 3D printed with color change. So one of them is a black colored PLA and change the filament to a white one. And now they look really, really nice. And I have an alternative version with all the letters going through on the material. So this is to have a backlight version. And then these are Cherry MX Mechanical Keyboard Switch clones. This is not official, 
but these are quite pretty high quality. There is a cavity here for the LED. They feel pretty good. So then let's get to the build. We will start with fitting the micro switches into the frame. Okay, so let's fit them one by one. You have to make sure that you put them such a way that the longer shape of this blue rectangular is parallel to the longer shape here of the frame. So just fit them like this. As you can hear, they are pretty nice fit. These small pins are just below the frame and it's just not going anywhere. So let's fit all of them. And now that we are done with all of these, I will flip it over. I already printed all the all the legs and what we will do now I just cut these tiny little cables and we will connect one of the legs together for example always the left one and this will be the common ground and the next next pins will go directly to the Arduino so let's do this. And now that all the pin all the ground pin are done, I will run from each and every other pin to the Arduino itself. So it will sit, Arduino will sit here. And I will run here the cables and we will just close it up at the end. Okay, so I am back. As you can see all the Cables are soldered up. I added some shrink wraps, some cable ties to, to make it nice. And uh, what I did in addition, I numbered from 1 to 15 each and every pins. So this will be turned over like this. Uh, switch, this is switch number 1 and this is switch number 15. And I made an Excel table where I made a note which of the switches goes to which Arduino pins. And this way it, it will make programming way easier because I can just put it together now because basically we are ready with the assembly. Everything is soldered up. We can put into the case. Okay, so I hold glued it down. Now oh, it's nice and secure. Now I need my USB cable. You have to take care to use a USB cable which has four wires inside because you need also the data cables it fits through on this hole and then you plug it in and I have this strain relief sink here I uh, will use M2 times 8 self tapping screws as I see, it would have been better to put the Arduino in this direction and then I would not have to run the ca cable so strangely, but it will do for now. I might change it in the future. This is the first time I'm building it, so I'm still learning. Okay, and this way cable is nice and secure. You will not rip it off. And then all that's left is closing the top, organize your cables, and we will use M2 times 8 mm screws also here. And it fits perfectly fine, it's really nice. All that is left is putting all the switches on. So, what I will do for the switches, this shortcut preview I found on the Fusion 360 forum and basically I will put each and every switches in the exact same order as they are here from left to right top to bottom okay then all that is left 
on the switches there are these tiny blue pins here I will cut off all these from the sides because this way the buttons, the switches will nicely fit on the top of this blue something I will just use this knife and just cut them off, they come off pretty easily and then in the correct orientation I will put all the buttons there one by one and we are done I think it looks super cool and it feels super cool this mechanical switches are really nice I also like this white printing on it then let's go to the Arduino code it's super simple basically it's based on the one button library you have to download this you have to download the keyboard uh, library and you define all the 15 buttons and the Arduino pins here here you define all the fun the name of the functions each button has to do and then as you can see the number 3 is the R button so I have the the click 3 is just for if you press it once and then the attach double click double click one is if you press it once and multi click is if you press it three times and that's all and then in the setup you just initiate them again and then as I told here you define each and every function if you if you press switch number one then it's pressing the Q button and then releasing it and so on and so on click number C again is the R button so if you press it once it's sending out the R button like if you would press the R button double click is uh, it's sending left shift R and the triple click is sending left control R basically this you have to set these shortcuts in Fusion 360 I will also show this later on and that's all, that's all basically nothing else so let's go let's switch over to Fusion 360 to show you how to change the shortcuts so here we are in Fusion you have to go for example now we are in sketch mode you go to rectangle because we want originally you only have the two point rectangle defined which is R uh, now I already defined the three point and the center point uh, rectangle as you can see it's shift R but you can change it such a way that you go to these three dots at the side you click on it and then change keyboard shortcut and then restore to default if it's not empty and you basically you press the R button twice and then it's sending shift R okay and then it's there it's the same for the other one if you uh, click here you press three times and then it's control R same for the circle I only put here the standard is C anyway with the center diameter and then the two point circle is shift C and the two tangent circle is shift O so you only have to change this same way and that's all okay and then let's show you again a more detailed view how it works basically this could also be nicely combined with my space mouse you could put it next to here or build the two together in one box and you could use them together you are moving the part all around and you press the buttons I think it would be a really nice way to do this okay so let's test it at first if I press it R button once then it's a two point rectangle then let's press it twice then as you can see now it's a three point rectangle so one two and three if, it pre if I press it three times then it's a center point rectangle I find this function really cool and it's way faster than uh, if you would need to go to create a rectangle and then search the rectangle this way it's way way faster and then the same for the circle if I press it once 
it's a middle point circle. If I press it twice, it's a two point circle. If I press it three times, then it's a two tangent circle. And then, for example, let's extrude this part. Then let's add some fillet. I press F, click on it, and give it a two millimeter. And then what else? Let's project. Let's press pre. I want to project this. No, it's, as you can see, it's already turned to red. And then let's offset. You press O. And then we offset from this. And that's all. As you can see, it works really, really well. Okay, guys, basically that's all about this video. I think this, is, this turned out a pretty cool and useful tool. I hope you like it. You can find the link to my GitHub repository in the description below, where you can find all the STL files for the 3D printable files. You will find the Arduino code and also the step files, the 3D printed step files. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it. If yes, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I hope I see you next time. Bye.